Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry we had to delay the launch of Hauntober on the channel. I got sick. There's nothing else to say about it. I got sick, but still. <laughs> so, before we get into our beginning of Hauntober, I am going to start off by pointing out my wonderful, awesome, adorable t-shirt. It says, welcome to Haddonfield, a friendly community. Friendly is crossed out, replaced with killer, and of course we have a picture of Michael Myers. So anyone who is a friend, or a fan of the Halloween movies. It's a great little thing. I got it at Spirit Halloween this year. Uh, they had some really good t-shirts at Spirit Halloween this year that are just like really cool little quirky references to horror movies. So if you're into that, go to Spirit Halloween. So let's get on with the review and launch of Hauntober. So all of these books that I'm going to be reviewing wild romances. They are going to be supernatural in some way, shape, or form simply because it is Hauntover. So we are starting off with the Three Sisters Trilogy by Nora Roberts. This is a series about witches. So the beginning book is Dance Upon the Air. I cannot find my copy of the book. Um, I started reading the next one and at some point I lost that one. <laughs> so um, I am going to copy and paste a photo from Barnes and Nobles in the thumbnail. If I can, I'll try and put it up in here. If I can't, then I won't because I'm just not tech savvy. Never have been. <laughs> so this is the story of Nell Channing and Zach Todd. Trigger warnings for this story include domestic abuse, PTSD, and flashbacks, and also sexual scenes. Um, they're not going to be as explicit as some other scenes, but it is there. So if that's something you're sensitive to, you might want to skip those and then of course it is a story about witches so if that is something that offends you then don't read it so the story actually begins in june of 1692 salem town in massachusetts yes it is that salem so there are three women who are meeting together in the forest in order to escape the persecution of the now infamous salem witch trials we learn these women are in fact true witches, each named for a different element. One is air, one is earth, and one is fire. Notice there is no water represented there because that will come in at a later date. The three women cast a spell that actually takes a large chunk of land, I think it's like nine or 10 miles of land, deposits it into the ocean, creating an island creating a safe haven for these women. And this island is also where the three stories will primarily take place. And then we jump forward to 2001. It does not specify what month, but because of the fact that it took the time to point out June of 1692, I'm going to assume that it is June of 2001. We meet our leading lady by the name of Nell Channing. She is on the ferry coming to Three Sisters Island. Um, not much else to do on a ferry besides look at the pretty, pretty scenery and think. So while she is in the middle of a little introspection, we learn that she is in fact fleeing an abusive relationship. She in fact faked her own death to get away from her husband. Um, for some unknown reason, she has been inexplicably pulled to this island. She'd seen a photo, felt a pull, and came. Not long after she arrives on the island, Nell meets Mia Devlin, who is the owner of a local establishment called Cafe Book. Um, Nell realizes that Mia is in need of a cook for the cafe. Mia hires her. But beyond that, Mia feels pulled to help Nell beyond just giving her a job. So she offers her a place to stay in a little yellow co cottage that she had felt moved to purchase at auction at, in a few months prior. All of these inexplicable pulls and moves to do things. I mean, foreshadowing is there and it is not always subtle. So keep that in mind. So it's not long um, after, you know, she offers now the cottage. Uh, it's not long after that that we learn that, surprise, surprise, Mia is a witch. And guess what? So is Nell and another woman on the island by the name of Deputy Ripley Todd. The three women are descendants of the original three witches who created the island. And as Nell learns about her power and craft, we the reader do too. I have notes today, aren't you proud? <laughs> it seems that the original sisters each met a tragic 
fate ending in death, and the new, and now the three descendants must face the same conflicts. And if they repeat the decisions of their ancestors, then the island will be destroyed. As the story progresses, Nell also develops in a, or also develops a relation, relationship. I can't talk. I'm sorry, with Ripley's brother, Sheriff Zack Todd. Um, she really didn't want to start a romantic relationship at first for totally understandable reasons. She, you know, had to fake her death to get away from her husband. She's a bit emotional. She is hurt. She's wounded. She is not confident in herself and she doesn't really trust men. Again, totally understandable given the situation. But as she learns about her power and as she really comes into herself as a person and gains confidence in herself as a person as she learns to stand up for herself and learns her own self-worth that changes and she really becomes more confident and vested in a relationship with Zach Todd. <clears throat> However, during this, this all this time that Nell is growing and becoming stronger, her husband learns that she is in fact still alive and comes to the island to confront her. And this, of course, is the first part of the descendants facing their ancestors' past failures. And since this is the first in an interlocking three-part story, I think we all know how the story is going to end. It's not going to end. So there's two more stories. So if you think that's too much of a spoiler, then oh well. So again, Nell really came into herself throughout the story. And as a reader, you really see her and feel her grow and become more confident. She goes from being a timid, kind of a scared little mouse of a creature to really being a force to be reckoned with in her own way. She's still very kind-hearted, she's still very gentle, but she does have a backbone that she develops and it's really kind of awesome to see her get past everything and become the woman she is now. So you see it reflected in her relationships with Mia and Ripley, um, and you also see it develop in her relationship with Zach, but you also see it in her as a person because she begins to take initiative and creates a side job alongside with her job at the cafe. She starts a catering business and, you know, openly having, you know, conversations and, and creating um, party events and things for people above and beyond that. And, and that's something she totally started on her own. She didn't have to have anybody holding her hand to do it, um, which is really kind of cool. Um, obviously, her husband comes to find her. She has to face off against him. I'm not going to give away the ending, even though it's pretty obvious how that ending is going to go. Uh, so let's get into the characters. Zach is an all-American good guy. He never fights his feelings for Nell. And while there isn't as much character development for him as I would have liked, um, he, you do see him struggle with like his anger to an extent about what happened to Nell. Whenever she flinches, whenever she cowers, he really gets upset about the fact, not at her, but at the fact that somebody had raised his hand to her to begin with. Uh, Zach Todd is very much the type of guy where you don't raise your hand to a woman. He's the sheriff of the town. He was raised to have integrity and um, and, and honor and things. And he really gets upset, understandably so, whenever someone is taken advantage of. He also has to deal with the fact that she's still married. Uh, that is something he, he was not informed of when they got together. So being a man of honor and integrity, that's something he does struggle with because he realizes, holy crap, I, I'm in a relationship with a woman who's married you know um so that's a bit much for him um really the fact that she is a witch doesn't seem to be a huge problem for him because he grew up on the island he grew up with the lore he knows mia his sister grew up um you know obviously in the same home as him and you, and she's a witch too as you find out she's not happy about it but that's totally different part there so so there is definitely character development. However, it's the first book in a story, so it's setting all the lore. And also, um, it, it, because Nell is learning about everything, 
they have to focus on the person who's teaching her, which would be Mia, uh, and, and also s establishing the relationship between the three women because they're going to be interwoven and interlocked in the other two stories. So something had to give somewhere, and I kind of feel like Zach got the shaft, so to speak. I feel like if it had been more of a standalone story, he would have had more character development. But again, and I've said this before with Nora Roberts, you're not going to get as much character development with her standalone stories. You have to really go with the series because any character development that gets missed now very well may pop up in another story. So you get a taste of Mia and Ripley as characters as well as they are part of the overarching story. Mia and Ripley used to be friends and practiced the craft together. Um, then something happened that caused her that caused Ripley to stop using her powers and completely turn from them as well as Mia altogether. Mia has always been secure in her powers. However, there are hints of a past romantic relationship that still causes her great emotional pain. And as a result, the two of them, their struggles, Mia and Ripley are constantly bickering um, and poking at each other. But throughout the story, you do see that even though they enjoy getting under each other's skin, they do still care about each other very much. They really just, their relationship is at a point right now where they can't be friends, but eventually they're going to have to uh, deal with the issues and, and move on. But it, again, it's setting the that tone for later stories. Um, so the relationship between Mia and Ripley seems to serve two purposes. One, to give different perspectives on um, the developments in the story, but also to foreshadow and set groundwork for the next two stories. So overall, I, I enjoyed this book. Um, I think it's a good series. Again, I think some things could have been explored a little bit more. But, you know, you only have so much space in a book. You only have so much leeway in that way. So overall, uh, I'd give it something like three out of five stars. Um, I, it's still enjoyable. I think a lot of people would like it. Um, it's particularly if you are not someone who has necessarily read a lot of supernatural stories, it would be a really good starting point because, you know, it's not overly extreme in in its depictions of witchcraft and supernatural things. So uh, I hope you like this review, minus all the rambling. Um, the next story will be Heaven and Earth, which is in fact Ripley Todd's story. So I look forward to seeing y'all at the next review. Have a great start to Haunttober. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite supernatural stories are. Um, I probably won't be able to get to them this year. However, I can always take notes for next year. So y'all have a wonderful day. Have a great week and I will see you all next time.